Supreme Magazine was our Facebook. It was our social media. I lived by what was printed in Green Magazine. It was a rock magazine with a capital R. Most people want to fit in somewhere. I wasn't going to find them in my high school. I found them in Cream Magazine. Buying Cream was a little bit like buying Playboy. You didn't want your parents to see either one of them. None of them had any business running, editing, or writing for a rock magazine. We're going to introduce everybody. Hi, hi. What's happening? What are you doing here? I sell dope downstairs. <laughs> Barry always had an explosive temper. You got a newspaper to get out? I had no credentials at all. We were this team of people who were all a little off. To put it in like a band comparison, that's when the band happened. Cream Magazine being based in Detroit gave it the grid. If you live in the Midwest, it's not all laid back and peace and love and good vibes. In 1971, the Rolling Stone party line was that the next big thing was James Taylor. Many teenagers went to Cream to learn about noisier stuff. Lester Banks and I started the same day. He kind of liked going against the grain. What's popular? <laughs> You guys suck. Take Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. Here is like musical sterility um, at its pinnacle. There's no parallel for it in the rest of rock journalism. It was not a magazine that was about rock and roll. Rock and roll was taking place at the magazine. Everybody was politically incorrect. That's what made Cream so good. He told the truth. 50 years after Cream's first issue published, it still stands for something. Either you're in on the joke or you are the joke. America's only rock and roll magazine. Yeah.